that's what we're going to get for today. That's fine. I'm happy with that. That's a little, a little over a dozen. I'm good. All right. Hello. My name is Matt. Uh, I am a curator of the Tumblr blog, the Car Captain Museum. I collect and I report on car captain mer merchandise, excuse me, and I am also keeping up with the new manga that we're going to be talking about today. I am also the host of the Car Captain Museum YouTube show, which is still fairly new, and that's why I have my camera here, because we're going to see this again up on my channel later. Obviously. The topic of today, we are talking about Guard Capper. We're talking about the new manga that is running in Nakayoshi currently. First off, let's gauge the room a little bit. How many people are familiar with the original series? Good, that's most of you, I would hope so. Alright, now, before today, how many of you knew that there is a sequel currently running? Slightly less of you. Good, okay, so not everyone is completely fresh. We know a little bit. Who's keeping up actively? Good. Okay, that leads me into this part. Potential spoiler warning. So far, there's not been a whole lot of... Everyone can still hear me, right? That's good? Okay. So far, there haven't been a lot of major reveals, so I don't have to try too hard to avoid spoilers. That being said, I will be talking about the original series, so if you haven't seen it now, it's been 20 years. Spoiler etiquette cannot help you. And again, there haven't been a lot of major revelations. We will be talking a little bit about the new series. Not too much. All right. Let's catch everyone up. Just get everyone up to speed with where the series is right now. All right, it's a series history. 1996, it debuted in Nakayoshi. It was written by these four ladies, Satsuki Igarashi, Nanase Okawa, Tsubaki Nekui, and Makona in the kimono. They are the ladies who wrote Tsubasa, Reservoir Chronicles, Magic Knight, Ray Earth, Kohajo, X, 1999, um, Angelic Lair, Chobits, Shirahime, Siki, yeah, Siki, yes, okay, it's a lot of them. It ran from 1996 to 1998 in the original manga run. It became 12 issues of manga, condensed later into four uh, omnibus issues. An example of a not. Never mind, I thought I heard it. it was condensed, or it comes out in that monthly Nakayoshi magazine like I have featured here. It was converted into an anime in 1998. It ran for two years, on, uh, up to the year 2000. 70 episodes, two canon movies. Came over here to America as car captors, heavily edited. It did receive an, a less edited English dub eventually. I personally don't recommend either of them. I recommend you just go get the original subs. They are available on Crunchyroll and recently on this Blu ray. Alright, we know the basic premise. It stars Sakura Kinamoto. She accidentally unleashes a book full of magical cards and has to play the worst game a 52 pickup ever put to screen. After that, she has to con convert them into her pink Sakura cards. It's a shoujo manga, so obviously, lots of, lots of pink, yes. Alright, cool. How's that sound? Way better. Okay, good, because that was distracting me, too. Okay, so anyway, like I was saying, turn cloud cards into Sakura cards that turn pink, girly, it's lovely, it's a shoujo manga. She is a, she has helped through her journey, through her friends, both non-magical and magical. She's got her guardians, a nice angel and a flying lion, and a bunch of enemies that are also friends. All right, good. Everyone up to speed on where we started? Now we're going to go on to where we are. Uh, June 2016, Nakayoshi Magazine announces that Car Captain Sakura is returning to print in Nakayoshi. It's been running since July 2017 uh, with one chapter a month, which is, uh, it seems, having been reading these, that's not the most common thing. There's sometimes a manga will go a month or two without a, uh, an update. Car Captain Sakura has gotten one every month. We are picking up exactly one year-ish since the series left off, shown here on the left. It's been redrawn, obviously, but we are basically literally picking up on the same page, despite that it's been 20 years in our time. A little bit of extra update in the art. You see that Sharon unfortunately lost a good, like, two inches of height. Sakura <laughs> actually regained uh, her hair spikes 
She had lost them briefly here. All right, so she is starting her middle school life. She is one year older now. Uh, Xiaoran is back from Hong Kong. They have a lovely, happy reunion. Tomoyo has not changed at all. Uh, we find out through the course of the first chapter where all her friends are. Most of them are in school with her, though they've all been kind of spread out and no longer all in the same class. Uh, Rika has been moved to a different school, i.e. she's been put on a bus out of the series, and we'll cover why that may be later. And Ariel is living in England uh, with Kaho. Alright? So, to start with, it seems like uh, life is going to be great for her. You know, she's stopped needing her magic. Uh, she hasn't even really been dreaming much. So, it seems like her life is going to go back to normal, right? Jinx is in. Very same night, she starts seeing dreams of this cloaked, mysterious figure, commonly surrounded by various objects. The uh, first time ever was surrounded by clear cards. She did not know what the meaning of these was in the dream, but when she woke up the following day, she finds out that the cards are clear, or her Sakura cards are clear, and they have lost all of their magic. Which is obviously a problem, because, you know, it's a lot of trouble putting all those in the book. Alright? So, based on that, you can probably guess where the plot goes from here. She gets a new key, a nice, uh, nice little dream key with a larger star. That becomes her new wand. She gets a new uh, incantation and everything. And she has to collect a brand new set of magical spirits running around her city, like this one. We'll talk about who those are later. These are the clear cards, or rather, I guess we're talking about them right now. The clear cards. It's not the cards that are so magical that despite being transparent, they still have two sides. And I'm sorry that this is not very clear up on this projector. But that, but that is the thing that goes with them, that they are on the front, they look like traditional cloud cards. On the back, they look like a new magic circle, but again, they're see-through. They kind of look like glass. To date, that is April, so the May issue, it's, I think 11 chapters have come out, we have six new uh, clear cards. The clear cards appear at first glance to somewhat be an upgrade of the original cloud cards. Looking at such like Gale, Aqua, our upgrades of Windy and Water, reflect a little bit, but then we start to get a little away from the traditional idea of what a cloud card is. Um, you can see up the top here, traditionally, cloud cards all have one kanji on the top. These are two, indicating their more advanced nature. Let's look at each one individually. The Gale. As I said, it's basically an upgrade of Windy. It creates fierce tornadoes. It was that giant wind snake that we saw in uh, the end of Chapter 3. And so far, it is just basically, it's, it's weaponized wind. It's less for binding and more for shooting. Avatar, I guess. All right, the next is the Siege card. Originally kind of thought maybe it was an upgrade of a shield. What it does is that it allows her to isolate small areas of space inside a pocket dimension. So, while in here, nothing can get in. Likewise, while it's in effect, nothing gets out. So the puzzle of this uh, episode, or chapter rather, was trying to figure out how do you get out of this box that has separated us from our reality. Next is Aqua. Again, it's an updated version of water. It's actually really basically no different. It creates a large amount of water. It allows her to control it. And when it, uh, when it appeared, it, was, um, it made torrential rain. So it's a little bit like the rain card in that regard. Next is Reflect. It is Mirror Force for anyone who has ever played Yu-Gi-Oh. It, there, there's really nothing else to say about that one. Next one is the action. And this one is actually a very interesting, brand new concept to the Cloud Deck. It gives inanimate objects the ability to move. Uh, when it's first introduced, you can see kind of down here, uh, it actually brought forest to life. So she had an army of trees to deal with. Later on in this chapter, she actually brings some teacups to life just to show off how it works. I kind of like this one with the whole gear thing going on. It's very mechanical, very. Um, it really gives you the impression that these, uh, these clear cards, whoever has made them, has a more, uh, more modern sensibility, I would say. Followed up, last one is the record card. It's kind of a mixture of camera, sound recorder, scribe down here at the bottom. We haven't seen too much of it yet. It came out right at the end of chapter 10, and we got to see a little bit of it in chapter 11. 
what it can do is it can take full 3D solid like holographic pictures. Presumably, you know, it only took a picture of her at this point, but you can probably imagine it can probably recreate whole environments, which would make recreating this whole uh, this whole panel really interesting for my channel. All right, and it also for some reason allows her to fly. But then, as of yet, we have no idea why she gained wings for the recorded card, but there you go. So that is the six uh, clear cards that we have currently. Gale, Aqua, Reflect, Siege, Action, and Record. Uh, at the end of the 11th chapter, we're hinting at there's probably going to be another one coming along. Don't know what it's going to be yet. It's not like some of the other chapters that have kind of hinted at what it's going to be with like a physical thing. Personally, given how it ends, I think it's going to have something to do with invisibility, but we will find out next month. Uh, another thing that comes back with this series, obviously, is costumes. Uh, Tomoyo is still making costumes for basically every adventure. And you can see they've, they've advanced a little bit. Tomoyo's sensibilities have gotten a little more mature, a little more elegant. Uh, there's a little bit of the frill left, not so much of the proof, as I would call it. Alright, so she's gone there, there, the, the star dress, which was recently colorized to uh, officially is white and uh, pink, I think. But, however, she still has fun occasionally with this frog-themed uh, raincoat. <laughs> So, old habits do kind of die hard. Story. Still not getting too spoilery here. We're just going to talk about some of the things that are going on. Some of these things have been, have been going on since chapter one. All right, we know from chapter one that even though Sharon is back, it's not necessarily under completely honest pretenses. The, he, it is very apparent from his actions and his dialogue that he is aware of what is going on, or at least kind of the deeper meaning of what's going on. But Ariel, despite not even being in the country anymore, is still pulling the strings. So hopefully we're going to find out. But basically every chapter with Xiaoran is showing that he fakes concern. Oh my god, another clear card, sh or clear card showed up. I hope you're OK. And then as soon as he hangs up the phone, he's like, man, I wish I could tell her what I know. The cloaked figure that was mentioned earlier has appeared in almost every chapter. It mainly comes to her in her dreams. We don't know anything about who this character is yet, but we do know a couple things, like the fact that she, uh, the, the character and Sakura are the same height. So there is, a, there is a theory going around, and we'll get to who that might be later. This character introduces a new magic circle. This is the circle that's on the back of the new clear cards. Uh, it's kind of based on the Sakura symbol a little bit. It's got the sun and the moon and a star here. It's still got the, uh, the Chinese elements going there. But it's, oh, it's otherwise completely overhauled. And honestly, it's a lot easier to draw because there are a lot less crisscrossy lines here. Love it. Um, the cloaked figure is not just a dream entity, though. As I mentioned, it does do this whole cliche standing on top of a power pole thing occasionally. Last thing to introduce is the new character, Akiho Shinomoto. And yes, that is Shinomoto with one character different from Kinomoto. And if you think that's a coincidence, probably not. The characters spend a little bit of time early on in the manga kind of comparing how uh, similar they, how similar their names are, how similar their personalities are. There's theories running around that she could be anything from a time travel daughter of Sakura to some kind of alternate universe thing. And given that Clamp is, you know, good at alternate universes, that one's, uh, that one's, you know, not exactly out there. Akiho, like most people who have ever transferred into Sakura's school, is well-traveled. She has been to most of, uh, you know, most of the big countries in Europe, Italy, England, Germany, France. She's been to Hong Kong. Hong Kong being a very big place for Sakura lore, as that's where the cloud cards came from. That's where Xiaoran comes from. And obviously, he's rather surprised she's been there. Though, given what I've said about how Xiaoran may be hiding things, that may have been fake surprise. We have no idea yet. Uh, her official coloration is blonde and blue-eyed. So she is definitely European. Where exactly she hails from? Excuse me, I don't know. Um, we find out that while she's in Japan, she is living with an 
originally unnamed guardian, and she has a stuffed rabbit that she carries around. This rabbit is named Momo. And another theory that we're going with here is that if Akiho is more important than we think, this rabbit might be more important than we think. Look at that little bling it's got here on its ear. It's not something you put on a, uh, on a stuffed rabbit. She lives with her guardian, Yuna D. Kaito. We know very little about him other than the fact that he is a butler, he makes lovely tea, and he's got a really fancy watch that he carries around. Now, for those of you who have not been keeping up, or want to know where you can keep up, I'm going to go into a few different places. Obviously, you could do like me, and you can buy the manga online. Um, you can't get Nakayoshi's outside of Japan without importing them. Typically, I go to eBay or to Tokyo Otaku Mode, and you can buy them from there. Uh, you can also go to Tumblr. There's, uh, there's my blog, CC Yamato, and there's a few others that circulate the, uh, the scanlated chapters as they come out. There's also a Facebook group uh, called Karkaku Sakura, the sequel. Uh, they generally circulate the scanlated chapters. Now, if you have something against scanlations, and I can understand why you may, because it is technically a form of pirating, you can get the manga. Uh, the first issue has come out at the beginning of January, I think. Um, and over in Japan, the manga comes in two varieties. You can either buy the standard paperback, which is just a book, or you can buy the special edition. The special edition comes with a gift. Uh, the first one came with a manga set. It came with a pen that's uh, shaped like the cloud wand. And it, uh, the second one came with just a bunch of little knickknacks. came with like pins, uh, some kind of like cardboard thing. I didn't pay attention to it. The third one has uh, a DVD included and we will find out about that. Uh, in terms of licensing the manga over here, the first one will hit over here in November of this year. All right, so that's the manga. Everyone following me? Good, I didn't drop out audio again, right? Okay, good. Now, does anyone have a really cloying question? I've been talking a lot about manga. I'm sorry, what? The girl that looks so much like her? Yeah. Is it expected that maybe she's the girl uh, in the hood? It could be that. But actually, sorry, I meant for a different ploying question. Is there an anime? Yeah. But we will get to those more questions later. Is there an anime? That's obviously the big question. Yes, yes there is going to be an anime. Let's give it up for anime. in the recent, um, it was announced in January that the anime would debut in Japan, January 2018, so full year later. Now, yeah, I sighed, I was like, no, a, a whole year I have to wait, but think about this, that's a whole year of development, plus a little time. They're not rushing, which is good. You don't want to rush good anime. Um, in the recent issues of Nakayoshi, we've gotten a little bit of news. Uh, first is that the director, Director Morio Masaka is going to be returning. Kaka Kusaka, as you can see up here, that was his directorial debut. He was the director of the series. He's also obviously known for all of these. And a few more, but I kind of ran out of room, so you know, we're only going for so long here. Uh, the animation director is Kunihiko Hamada. He was a chief animator on the second movie over there, that one. He was the assistant director here. He's been a character designer for uh, Chihaya Furu. He animated one episode of One Punch Man. Uh, he was an animation director here on Boy and the Beast. Personally, I would love to see uh, Mariko Fujita come back. She did the artwork for all these Precious Memories cards. Uh, there's like uh, something like 25 or 50 of these cards that all have uh, unique new, new images. Every one of Sakura's uh, original costumes is
teaser was revealed exactly one week ago on the Sakura birthday celebration over in Tokyo. So with a little bit of uh, questionable measures, I managed to get a rip of that. Uh, but so everyone here can watch it. It was really not easy to actually watch that stream, to be quite honest. It changes a few things. So, things that we can pick up from the new anime. A few stills here. Again, like I said, the animation is definitely cleaner. It's a little more shiny because it's all digital. Character designs are largely unchanged, except for it kind of looks like when you see here, it looks like Kaho's lost a little bit of chin. Uh, same thing with Yukito. He used to have like kind of a long chin. He kind of uh, got a little flatter. Unfortunate for him. Um, and we saw in the last frame there, that is, uh, that is the animated version of where the manga is going to be picking up. Where, they, where Sakura and Xiaoran meet on the walkway, all the Sakura blossoms are everywhere, it's beautiful. So that's where we're going to start. And that is where my presentation part ends. I'd uh, like to thank you all for listening to that part. Uh, if you would like to join the conversation, which is now a toxic term, I think, um, we have a Discord chat called the Cloud Kingdom, if you want to look into that. I, on YouTube and CC Yamato, I talk about, uh, I do monthly updates of the manga as it's coming out, and when the anime comes out, I'm not going to do Let's Watches, but I will probably do a similar kind of thing, where, you know, I'll watch the episode and I'll kind of, you know, do a, a sum up of it. I run three tumblers. I run the, t the Car Captor Museum, which talks about all the merchandise that you can buy. Uh, Car Captor Fridge Thoughts is mostly just those kind of weird things I think about, you know, when I'm just kind of bored and I think... Boy, it's kind of weird that, like, even though Xiaoran and Meiling are both from China, they never speak any Chinese. <laughs> And actually, I forgot to mention that point. There is no confirmation yet whether or not Mei Ling, who is an anime-only character, will be coming back to the series. She obviously isn't part of the manga, so she hasn't, and probably won't appear in the manga. There is no news on whether or not she will appear, have episodes, or whatever, uh, in, in the anime. One can hope. CC Yamato is my personal blog. It still mostly ends up being card capture stuff, but occasionally there's something else on there. All right. That is the end of the presentation part. I would now like to open it up to the discussion part if anyone would like to ask me questions about the things that I didn't cover or if you've got your own theories. And we'll start with you. Okay, so you were just talking about how Meilin was like an anime-only character, right? Yes. So at what, what point did they start incorporating her into the manga art? Because I noticed that they did a lot of like cover art with Meilin in them. So like, do you know at what point they started putting her in there? Um, Meilin's mo uh, so Meiling was never incorporated into the, into the manga, obviously. She did get some of uh, the appearances in the issues, or in, in, in extra art, and, but it didn't, it didn't really run while it was running in the manga, because the manga ran from 96 to 98, where the anime began running, or began production in 1997. By the time Meiling was introduced, she was no longer in the manga, so most of the additional by clamp art that's done of her is introduced in the additional art books. So that's where like the uh, clamp art books one, two, and three, uh, the anniversary edition that came out recently, that's where that all came in. So it was mostly a, uh, a post manga run that she started appearing that official artwork. No one else? Are there any other topics or anything relating to Car Captor Sakura that I did not talk about that you had questions about? Who's excited? Perfect. That that is good. I, we've, all, we've all been waiting for 20 years for this to happen. It, the, the the original anime ended. Well, okay, not quite 20 years, I guess, because it ended in 2000, and it's 2017 now. So 17 years, depending on when you picked up the series. I personally picked it up with Card Captors originally in 2001. So that was kind of my introduction to proper anime. I'd watched some of Sailor Moon before, but that was really my first one. How do you think this whole new arc is going to fit into like, the whole Tsubasa thing? Because I know she's been showing up in Tsubasa. She was like. Not like a side character, but like a cameo. Right. Where she helped pay. Was it like Joe Sakura? Maybe? Yeah, yeah. 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 Y
post-triple-x-holic world, you have to keep that clamp multiverse in mind. And this is a, and when I say post, I mean like, this is this is after the, the, the manga has been written, assuming, you know, ideas change. I'll, I'll get to you in one time. So, um, in the clamp multiverse where you have multiple versions of the same character over and over again, uh, no one's really talked about so far how the Sakura who appears handing over a wand to Yuko may tie into this universe. It is my personal theory that it doesn't. It's another variation of her story. Uh, it's, another, it's another branching like storyline for a different universe of Sakura who's more similar to the one that we're familiar with. If I want to get meta here, I want to say that it's because they wrote uh, Tsubasa well before they wrote or conceived of this new manga, and they may be retconning it. But fortunately, since they made a giant multiverse, retcons are really easy. Um, um, have you noticed anything in the art of the manga that gives a visual indication that they're trying to sort of uh, soft progress the timeline? Like, are the characters still using, well, I guess they would have cell phones? In yes. Now I, know, now I know what you're talking about. Yes, they have progressed the uh, the manga a bit, uh, or they've, they've progressed their technology a bit. Everyone in the cast now has a smartphone. So despite that, yes, you know, this ended in 1998, uh, everyone's gone up from that large plastic phone that she had in uh, the manga and the anime to nice, uh, whatever I guess the generic smartphone looking thing is uh, in... Yeah, they, they've, they've, skipped, uh, they've skipped technology a little bit here. You know what? It might actually help if I just bring up some stills. Isn't smartphones like, to, to be like, super popular in Japan? They were. And even at the time of publication, it was fairly common to have them. So now what everyone's got is... Come on. Here we are. Let's try that one. Nope. Okay. We, we do see that Kiro has updated from the the Nintendo PlayStation mix-up to kind of a Nintendo PS4 is what I call it now. He's got the, he's got the PS4, yet they still haven't ditched um, cords, as you can see. Uh, yeah, you can see a little bit here in the corner, Sakura's got a smartphone somewhere around here. I'm going to find it. Here we go. That, that's kind of the that's kind of one. You can see Ariel's got his iPhone-looking thing here. She's got what looks like a star on the back of her as a case. So yes, uh, there has been some soft updates to technology-wise. She's got, she's updated from that old, uh, that old tube TV that sat in her room. She's now got, I believe we saw, that nice flat screen that's sitting in the corner there now. So uh, in a year, they made a lot of progress in their universe in terms of that. <laughs> um, talking about artwork in general, um, the art style of the series has changed not too much. Uh, you can see, like, in some of these frames as we go, like, the prevalence of kind of shading and black is a little more common. Like, in the original manga, there's a lot of empty space, there's a lot of white, where now we've updated, and it's probably a change in coloring technology. We get a little more black in here. We get a little more of this kind of hyper detail. Um, so the... The quality, I would say, has gone up a little bit, but for the most part, they're still, they're still working to capture the original look. In terms of how the characters have changed, uh, not too much has changed. Uh, Sakura does not wear her hair in the little, uh, in the little bobbles anymore. Uh, she also, she, like, her character is making an effort to grow up. In the recent chapters, she's actually tried to, she's, she's admitted to trying to not say hoy so, many, so much. You know, cutest feature, she's trying to, forcefully remove it from herself. Unfortunately, she completely fails when, uh, when uh, confronted with something cute. What a shame. So, is anyone else? Um, so, earlier on you said that some of the clear cards are just obvious upgrades from the existing cloud cards, like yep. windy and watery, but a lot of the cloud cards have personality, right? Like, you get to see the mirror come out a lot. Mm -hmm. So, do you have any theories about what happened to the original cloud cards? Are they going to come back, or are the clear cards going to replace them? 
Because so, the clear cards they just seem like objects. Like the designs seem oh, like yeah. objects, whereas all the cloud cards are like human, human or like animals. Not human, but like humanoid yeah, creatures that, or animals. Yeah, they definitely have that mechanical feel here. Let me find, let me find my, uh, here we are. Yeah, so yeah, you're right. The, the clear cards feel a lot more mechanical. Um, in terms of personality, uh, that's a good question. Uh, some of these have appeared so far, we haven't really gotten to interact with them on a sort of personal level. They just kind of appear, they do their thing, and they get captured. It's the nature of manga, it's fast paced. One of the ones, the last one, Record, sorry, I have my pointer here. Record, oops, actually kind of did have a personality a little bit because this was the first card that she had to capture not through brute force, but by merely asking it to be her friend. So there is some level of sentience in these cards. It's just that so far it's not as pronounced as the cloud cards. And you can see also like, whereas most of the cloud cards were humanoid in nature, these are all very much like there's no faces. There's, a, there's kind of this what looks like might be an eye, but this is just a mass of water, this is a butterfly, this is a cube, gears, a camera lens. So yes, the, these uh, clear cards are considerably less human than the cloud cards. Uh, and where we're going with this, we don't know. Uh, on the topic of what happened to the cloud cards or what's going to happen to them, uh, it's currently kind of in limbo. She still has the cloud book and it is still full of the blank glass cards, basically, but it, effectively right now they are just kind of frozen in magic and she may get them back at some point when the forces that be that are making this current plot happen uh, allow them to have their magic back. Or, or they are being used, yeah, as the base to make these new cards. So far we're only 11 issues in, so we, or 11 chapters in, so we really haven't gotten too much on that. Okay. Um, there's a theory that, there, like Cloud Ring, he invented the, the two original Cloud cards in yep. the original. There's a theory that maybe someone else besides Cloud Ring can actually make those cards, like the action and the recording and like the technology. So, yeah, it might be someone like a time traveler or someone, you know, tries to make more cards for the series. That's good. That's, that, that's a good one because as, as we may remember from very early on in the series when Kiro is learning Sakura a little bit about magic, and he talks about the fact that magic is, not exactly to use his analogy, but magic is very much like cooking. Anyone who follows the instructions can do magic. Kyle Reed was special because he created a completely new type of magic. He created new magic to make the cloud cards. So it is not unreasonable to think that someone has found Kyle Reed's work and has followed his instructions to make these clear cards. So it, it is to say that yes, the cloud cards are original and unique, but not because they're not uncreatable, it's just that the only person who at the time knew how is dead, but someone has figured out his notes. Well, okay, so I, don't, I know like the movies aren't really canon, but like in movie two, didn't she create that card? So do yes. you think Sakura is in the future, in the Uncle is, is there gonna be a point where she starts creating her own cards instead of just transforming? Because so far she, she catches cards and then she transforms existing cards into her own cards. Right. But like, do you think that they're going to follow like movie two with a little like whatever that was and like try to well, see? The, 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 the movies are canon uh, to the anime. They are not canon to the manga story and that's where we kind of get this bridging narrative because we have to kind of glue the, the spiky end of the anime to the round end of the, uh, of the manga. Um, when it comes to making her own cards, that's actually an ability that wasn't really talked about much in the manga. So it's kind of a thing where, based on the pace of the series right now, it sounds like that's kind of be a, going to be a thing that's kind of set aside, uh, or at the very least is going to be addressed in the manga, or in the anime adaptation, because right now, the manga doesn't care about what the anime story is. But the idea that, yeah, a, like a future Sakura could have created more cards, that's an idea. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No. Wait, so as a follow up, did Clamp, um, did Clamp play any role in like directing the like the second movie? Because like what we said before, 
Clan kind of took elements from the anime, like they put Mei Lin into some of the cover, some of the like art book pictures. Do you, so like I can't remember this, but like did Clan play a role in kind of like developing the story of movie two? Like I was wondering, like that idea of that we're creating parts was that something that Clan came up with, like the animation directors? Yes. So uh, Nanase Okawa, uh, the second one, the one on white. She, it, uh, Clank was heavily involved in the uh, creation of the anime, so it was not, it was not a product of like, they wrote the manga and then the studio took it and did their own thing. They were heavily involved in doing all the extra cards, they did all the extra costumes, they did all the artwork for that. And Nanase Okawa wrote a majority of the episodes, or at least storyboarded them, so, yeah, and, and moving on, yes, uh, Clank was heavily involved in the creation of the second movie, however, Follow-up, Nanase Okawa, who again storyboarded a large chunk of it, also admitted that the story of the second movie didn't necessarily mean that much. It was more of a vehicle to get Sakura and Shaoran together at the end. So it was, the second movie's goal was really more of a uh, way to tie in the anime to the manga's original ending. Which is why when you think about it, in, in the second movie, if you don't remember, the main thing was that there was an extra card, a void card, a nothing card that made things disappear. You might also remember that there was an erase card that did exactly that same thing. So, when asked about that, that's exactly what the response was. It's like, we really just wanted the couple to get together. We didn't care so much about the plot. Um, this is like, sorry, I'm like hogging up all the questions, but um, this is kind of like a follow up. So, if Clam, you know, like they. If Clam played a role in like redesigning all the extra anime costumes, like all the extra cards that weren't in the manga, mm -hmm. why did they like redesign costumes that already existed in the manga? Like for example, her final judgment dress in the manga right. was different from her final judgment dress in the anime. Like why did they redesign some of the dresses that she wore? But they didn't. It wasn't like an addition. They just completely changed her outfit. Why do you think they did that? So the exact answer for that, I obviously, I, I don't exactly know. Part of it is going to be an animation thing. If you look at like, if you look at her final judgment dress, that's that, that that black top one and the pink and the pink skirt with like a million pleats in there. Oh no, so, wait, I'm talking about like the one where she meets Yue for the first time. Yeah. So in the manga, she had like the orange, like like she had like an orange and yellow outfit with like a giant hoop, and then in the manga, she had like a completely different outfit with like thigh highs and like a cape. I might, be mixing, I might be mixing up which costumes are, but anyway, the, at least for my theory, and I'm sure part of it is an animation side, whether or not the costume was practical to animate, and another side was at least an effort to kind of differentiate the anime a little bit from the manga. So, I, I, like, when you look through the anime, most of the costumes that she wears for one card are inconsistent with the cards that she, that she wears the same costume for, in the manga. For instance, while the water card, that blue jester outfit, that's the same in both. But like in the, uh, when she fights the twin card in the anime, she wears that, that outfit, the, the black top shorts, the pink coat. That happened way, way earlier in the manga and that was the shield card. So I think there, there might have just been a little bit of that. It was just a matter of like, we want to use all these costumes, but we don't necessarily want to use them in your order. Or, as I said first, it was probably at least partially uh, in deference to animation uh, difficulties, whether or not it was just impractical to animate, or it would have just taken too much time, or something something goes wrong. The like, animation process is a crazy thing sometimes. Well, um, you may make an appearance in the... Have you may made an appearance in this uh, reboot yet? Yes, Yue has been a, uh, a major player. Well, not, not, not necessarily a major player. I shouldn't say that. He is here. Uh, he, has been, he is currently living in Yukito's house. Uh, he and Yukito still obviously coexist. Um, he hasn't really done much because, um, and neither is Kira for that matter, um, neither of them have done much because the clear card's magic is fundamentally different from theirs, to the point where Yue cannot detect the magic that is that makes up the clear cards. When he holds one, he has no power over it, and he has it basically feels like a regular card to him, as opposed to how the Cloud and Sakura cards worked, where the Guardians were part owners of the cards. So it kind of speaks to how the clear cards are very different, because neither of the Guardians, Kira or Yue, have any connection to them. And that's kind of why both of them haven't had a very active role in the series as of yet. 
Kiro has mostly been sitting around playing video games. He and Zupi are avid uh, online gamers now. And Yue is busy mostly just letting Yukito live his life. He and uh, Yukito and Toya are both working part time and going to college. But hopefully, yes, we will see some more Yue be more active eventually as the series kind of ramps up. Um, sorry. <laughs> don't don't feel bad. Um, okay, so I forgot. I just remember, like, is it in the monk in um, clear art? Isn't Ruby sick? Like, it was briefly touched upon that she's not doing well. Like, she's kind of sick. You're right. What, she, she do, you guys, do you have any like theories about what would be causing that? Or there is no, there has been no mention of why it is. Um, there's been no uh, mention that like Ariel's power is weakening or anything. Um, I actually brought this up in a discussion at one point. Someone thought. Someone mentioned that there might have just been a panel that um, implied that she just kind of wore herself out with excitement. But I feel like when you show her bedridden like that and being cared for, that's not a uh, that's not something they'd bother showing. Like that's not something they'd bother illustrating unless it was important. If she had just worn herself out, it would have been an off-panel gag. That just you know from a writing perspective, that's how I would frame that. Uh, I I thought they established that because she needed to feed on like, magic, that, that was why she was weak. That was just how I interpreted it. Uh, yeah, so that, that's in reference to the fact that uh, Ruby doesn't necessarily need to eat magic in that way. I mean, she lives off of Ariel the same way that Yue lives off of Sakura. She, it, it, her plot line in the manga was that she wanted to eat Toya's magic because it was tasty. Um, but she didn't necessarily need it. She was just disappointed that she didn't get to eat it. She just liked cough coffee. Like, she, she had like nothing, so she had no reason. She just liked jumping in and like interrupting them. Like her life, she was just chaotic and troll. It was a, a beautiful troll. That's why I, I, I love her. Like, it, I, not so much a fan of Ruby, but I love Naku. That's why I have the shirt. Anyone else? I think I've got. Yeah, I've still got time. I've got time for more questions or more discussion if we got it. And if we're not, then. Thank you all for coming. Uh, thank you for listening, uh, providing uh, some great discussion. Uh, I am doing two more panels tomorrow, if you are not sick of me yet. Uh, I will be doing a panel on bootlegging tomorrow, how to spot bootlegging, not to actually bootleg next. And I will also be doing a panel on, uh, oh, I forgot my own panel, on how to meet celebrities, sorry. Yes. Uh, was, was Kara still a cast of Max Soccer's Yes, he has gotten a few. He has gotten a few instances of um, of magic accessories. Wait, I have a question. Yeah. So in the anime, you only see Tomoyo like make stuff by hand. Like you see Tomoyo like hand stitching Sakura as a costume. Mm -hmm. And I was always like, how does she make all of them? Because I also cosplay characters. I also make the costumes. But like in the manga, I know she like she takes Sharon's measurements and she's like, oh, I'm gonna make you matching costumes with Sakura. Do we ever see her use a sewing machine? How oh, is she making She probably does. Right? But like, yeah, well, you know, she, is, she is rich and she's got a lot of time. Yeah, well, she probably like does make the sheets and if you see her so she's probably just like, what like, like yeah. she's probably just like, like, Oh, like making mistakes. Does she still have like the band, the band all costume? She still has a closet. She still has a closet. And uh, yeah, I just brought this one up as you can see. Very small, very small here. Yes, Kiro does still get his accessories. He's got a little bow here for uh, for her star dress. For again, the record that lets her fly for some reason. I don't know. I, this has been perplexing me for like two months. Do you think that whoever made the clear cards is targeting Sakura to test it? Test them against her, because she is like the not only the descendant, but like the heir of the cloud cards. Right. For now, the Sakura cards they should be. Okay, so that's getting that's getting a little more into the chapter eleven reveals, uh, at least spoiler territory wise. Oh, I, um, I haven't read chapter eleven. So uh, without getting without giving anything away. Um, that's not a bad idea that they're being created as a means to kind of push her development the same way that Ariel showed up to force her to transform the cloud cards. Um, it is also possible that just um, these clear cards may be an incidental result of something because um, I won't reveal who it is or what exactly this conversation is, but there's some hints that Sakura's book, 
and subsequently probably the cards, may be an additional target. Like, we know that the cloaked figure wants her key. It wants that new key that uh, she got. Um, it's also implied that the book may also be a target. So they may want the whole package. And that may be a, a case of like, they're trying to make their own cards, but what they really want is the real thing. Yeah, but sending the cards after her and then she's catching the card, isn't that counterintuitive? Like, I want to test out her, I send the things after her, but then she's catching the, catching the card that well, I push like, it. Like, she's like, magic now. Well, I assume it's like villains against like the hero, like you're sending, trying to see like how strong the hero is and all that. Uh, or yeah, or arming her for a later conflict. That's like you're, you're right. It could be counterintuitive. It's like I'm trying to make these things, and it's like oh, this one's garbage. That's Just like throw it out. The entire existence, like the second part. So I, I, I don't want to go too far into that one because that one's uh, that one's part of chapter eleven. And I don't want to talk too much about that. So I, I, I get the impression that we're going to start getting a little more into plot thickening elements now, because it's it's been 11 issues, or 11 chapters. I say issues because they come out in these things. So it's been 11 chapters, and I think we're starting to get to a point where um, some things are gonna start getting revealed. That's, um, it, it's not too much of a stretch to say that since Akiho transferred into the school, and this is a show all about where transfer students end up being important, you can probably assume Akiho is more than she appears. And personally, that's, that's who I think the cloaked figure is, but we will uh, we'll figure that out eventually, hopefully. Um, okay, so your theory was that Rika kind of got like removed from the narrative because her, um, her voice actress passed away. Yep. But like when I first read it, I was like, oh no, Rika got transferred to a different school system because she was dating that sensei. And now, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, the conflict of interest, so she can't keep dating him, so she had to transfer out of the poet system into a private school system. So then I guess kind of like your theory is kind of slightly more, like I guess like more morbid, think that she's never gonna come back. Right. right. Like, do, do you think, well out of my theory, which is me being shitty, but like, do you think she's ever gonna come back? Rika's ever gonna show up again? She just kind of, that character is gone. Cause she was pretty, she was pretty important. Not that important, but she was um, like her and Naoko and Chiharu and all of them are still like, the other girls are still in the series and they still play a role. Oh, and Yamazaki. They do, they do play a role and like, it's probably a combination of, you know, where I said that like, they just politely move the character to, the character might be more controversial now because she was dating her teacher and she's only 10 years old. So it, what flew 20 years ago in narrative might be different now. I haven't exactly been to Japan recently to see where we stand on that sort of romantic, on that kind of romantic standing. So it may be she was removed for that reason. Does that mean that she can't come back at all? It certainly doesn't mean that she can't come back, but I think it's a fair bet that she's never going to be a recurring character. The, the clan school like detectives? No, actually, I think the I think the Clamp School series uh, came out before them, and the Clamp School series came out as um, before uh, before Clamp officially came together as the group we know them now. They were all individual doujinshi authors, and the Clamp School, from what I understand, is a way for them to kind of what when they started working together the clamp school was an environment for them to sort of help integrate some of their own personal ideas into sort of a shared universe so it was kind of a it was kind of a, a play area to kind of test things and that's where the clamp school series came from that's where duck leon came from and the man with 20 faces so um and also the clamp school paranormal investigator which is a light novel so i'm pretty sure most of those uh series i don't know their exact timelines but those i think were earlier works uh, resulting just from them kind of learning to work with each other. Uh, I only bring it up because there was some really uh, weird relationship. Yes, there were a lot of things. So it was like a preschooler engaged to a second grader or something? Yeah. It was really weird. I remember that. Um, Man with so, 20 faces. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Adorable. Yeah. So I thought if that had come out later, Clamp's attitude was Maybe separate, not not changing. Yeah. So, yeah. 
it is nice that you have like all, all this weird stuff that happened to Basha and like your son traveling with you, your like, person to think of you because back to his son, etc. Et yeah. Okay, I'm still trying to understand the ending of Subasa. Yeah. They stop reading after like I don't know. I can't I can't I can't read Subasa because it like because Kartam Shakra is so also and then Subasa it just like everything just goes to shit and it like hurts me. <laughs> Well, and, like, it ended with like giant happy ending of you are the son of your clone that you sent back in time. Who is also <laughs> your father. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a big time travel loop of just craziness. Is that why people think Akiho is like the daughter of Sakura and Shara coming yeah. back, traveling back in time? There is, what, there is that theory and there was also uh, this important little detail that came along when she was first introduced. <laughs> And it's a completely cosmetic thing, so it might not matter. Is it just the, the ah ah ahoke? Yes. Here? This. <laughs> this little thing coming off her head. No one else in the series except a certain protagonist has this. Her butler has it too, right? Does, yeah, you're, you're right. Kaito does have it, but it's, it's far less pronounced. So what's uh, Kaito and <laughs> It's either her son no, or it's no, just no, the fact that this is all related, related to each other. Oh, 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 that's good. That's good. So yeah, Yuna D. Kaito, which is another thing where like you think is like is he like related to Phi D. Flower Rider? Or they, do, do they just like the middle initial D? I'm not sure. They might just like cars for initial D. Um, all right, I think. What was that? Because she was like, oh. One more. Yeah. How could she um, transform the new her new key into the wand? What? what? Uh, there is an incantation. I don't have it on me. Um, I mean, I could find a. Uh, I could find a page for it, but it, it transforms the same way as the old one. She just it pulls out the key, says the incantation, it becomes the new wand. Uh, when it comes to uh, capturing these cards, she captures them the more uh, traditional way. Rather than, uh, rather than transforming them from a base, she uses the command secure to pull the spirit into the card form. So rather than, you know, whatever, you know, return to your true form, it is now secure. So it's kind of, it kind of implies that these things are more like wild creatures rather than they were meant to be cards. It's like, the reason that they're coming out as cards now is because that's just how she knows how to do magic, is to turn things into cards. Oh. Yeah, like, you know, so game. I still not, have not accepted the All right. Uh, thank you everyone very much for coming. I'm pretty sure I have to uh, close up here for the next panel. Thank you all for listening. Uh, like I said, I have two panels tomorrow if you want to listen to me talk about something else. Um, until then, I, I, I'll be in this room too, so I'll be here bright and early. So, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your questions.